Hey what's going on guys, Kodamaki Kings here, this video is intended for those of you guys who simply want to embed so-called magic bit boards into your chess engine without, without getting bothered much with understanding how in particular how exactly they work and how to implement them. So uh, I would, uh, I've created the piece of code actually implementing so-called plain magic bit boards and they are available down right over in here and uh, but the problem uh, was uh, was the following actually so when I came up with this uh, code back in those days when I initially started diving into the magic bit boards idea in general uh, I saw this code but obviously it's not an implementation because it doesn't actually uh, let you to initialize this pre-calculated attack tables and it only shows how to uh, reference them but it doesn't show you how to uh, how to initialize them that's why you can't really make use of it without understanding how exactly it works so I spent really lots of time uh, for about took me for about two months to understand the idea and for about a couple of weeks more in order to implement this and I've managed to do this thankfully to this code by third rooms that that is actually intended to generate the magic bit boards because when I was trying to apply the already existent magic bit boards from the best magic so far uh, list available on um, on this chess program in uh, Wikipedia not sure yeah from from this list best magic bit board boards so far but they didn't work and uh, that was due to the run board and the anis that I had in my engine and this best magic so far did rely on a different board than the Anis. but it's not the point really so um, in this video I just want to show you how you can make use of the code that I've created and that's basically it so uh, it already have uh, uh, the pre-calculated uh, magic uh, uh, magic numbers for rooks and for the bishops and these numbers are generated by by this program as well. We also have them in separate in this text file. And but this doesn't really matter that much. So the very essential part here uh, to to take care of is that we have these two arrays, two dimensional arrays, and we're using the first index to uh, uh, as the square where. Uh, is the square occupied in this case by bishop and in this case by the rook and uh, in order to reference the second index we need to generate so-called magic index and this magic index is being generated within this get bishop attacks and get rook attacks and how exactly this works why why it works please reference this chess program in wikipedia because I can't apply this, but uh, I don't yet understand this really that great. I mean, like, I understand how to apply this, but uh, I don't have enough understanding to explain you how it works and especially why it works. But uh, I can show you how to make use of this, and I think this is quite pretty important. So, this uh, C program has uh, can work in kind of two modes. So the first mode where we can just run this initialization routine that would actually be generating this magic numbers but as far as we already have them pre-calculated uh, there is no much need for that so we can just command them out and never take care of them again so this will be interesting only for those of you who would actually like to dive into the process of generating the, the magic numbers if you're interested in this topic in particular but if you want to apply the pre-calculated attack tables, you don't really need this, so you can just ignore that. So in order to make use of the pre-calculated attack, table attack tables for bishop and rooks, we first need to initialize them, and this code is already available within the main routine. So it's the main driver here. So uh, as far as we have this, uh, we can already use these two essential functions called get bishop attacks and get rook attacks. So in order to make use of these functions, we need two variables to pass as an argument to this function. So the first variable is the square occupied by the bishop. If you want to generate attacks, sorry, for, for a bishop, 
and the uh, board occupancy. And by saying occupancy, we mean not only white pieces or not only black pieces, but all the pieces available. And the distinguishing between the white uh, pieces and black pieces, like your own and the opponent's pieces, is left to the general rate move routine. So regarding the attacks, we don't care regarding the color of the occupancy. So uh, let me just first uh, uh, let's create occupancy bit board and u64 is the type uh, to represent the unsigned loan loan insurance programming language so u64 occupancy this will be equal let's initialize this to zero unsigned loan loan ull uh, which means that there are no pieces on board from uh, like no no occupancy on the board so uh, like the empty board there and now let's um, generate bishop attacks so well not generate but actually get bishop attacks so let's say get bishop attacks so uh, we have a function called print bitboard pre-coded here just to pretty print the result uh, bitboard that would be returned by this function get rook attacks or get bishop attacks so we can simply say get bishop attacks and let's consider the square d4 we already have this uh, pre-calculated uh, names for squares in order to avoid bringing bring in something like this we just use d4 and that's it and the next argument we're passing this occupancy right over in here so we just now run this again uh, we see the bit board that represents uh, the attacks for a bishop if it st stands on d4 so as far as no occupancy available it goes to the edges of the board and nothing can stop bishop from attacking to all the available sites but it will now start start uh, putting some pieces on board that would represent uh, the occupancy uh, pieces so it's kind of like if bishop hits some sort of a piece along the way then this race race would be dropped at the point exactly where the occupancy piece is encountered so let's try to put a piece on g7 so in order to do this uh, we can simply say like set bit we have a this pre-coded pre macro and occupancy and oh, obviously you'll have your occupancy incrementally updated uh, uh, within your mode generator but uh, here I just just want to give you a, a very basic idea and let's put the piece on g7 okay so let's put the piece on g7 save and run again so now you see like the ray drops on g7 because it hits the piece and it's not really going anymore and uh, again like the most uh, brilliancy behind this approach is that the bishop attacks are not calculated on the fly we're just looking up uh, the table which is called this uh, bishop attacks so the, the board you can see here uh, in, your, in, your, in your console it's already stored within this bishop attacks array so this, this is the most brilliant server in this approach okay and now let's let's say we have already this uh, occupancy piece on, G, on G, uh, G6 but let's try to put another one on F6 so uh, I can also uh, by the way I can also print uh, print the occupancy to, to give you an idea how it looks like so what well, looks like as well so print occupancy and oh sorry print print bitboard and occupancy like this uh, and let's have a look okay so here we have our piece uh, uh, available on G7 and we have and we see that the uh, bishop doesn't actually uh, go uh, beyond this piece so it drops where the piece is available that's kind of it and let's try to consider another piece uh, so set bit uh, c and f6 for example and 
example. So let me just copy this to not to avoid printing from scratch. So now we see like it drops on F6 already. So even though that we have uh, a piece here and we can even have piece here, it doesn't matter really because anyway we need to drop where the first occupancy uh, occurs basically. So now let's try to put a piece on say C5. Okay, so let's put a piece on C5 and now we have our uh, attack rate uh, dropping at C5. So let's try the B2 as well here. So let's try one on B2. So here we got it just drops on B2. And if we just put the one on G1, it won't affect anything because G1 uh, because it's already on the board edge. So th this is this is the exact behavior of this look that look the lookup tables how it should look like basically. So this this is regarding the bishops and literally the same regarding the rooks basically. So um, uh, this was uh, well let's call this a bishop occupancy and uh, frame board bishop occupancy and get bishop attack for bishop occupancy. So I just want to store this code for you to be able to play around with this later on. And now let's create bishop. Now let's create another bit board. So create rook occupancy. Well obviously mm, in, in the real mode generator we would be dealing with the, with the only occupancy. Uh, which is the same for rooks and bishops, uh, obviously. But just for for the demonstration purpose, just just to have this code uh, already here, I just want to create another variable. So u64, let's call it rook, rook occupancy, and again zero on sign long long. Sorry. Okay. And so, oh well, first let's get rook attacks. Okay, so copy, paste, get rook attacks. If I only could have this, like uh, when I just started with this. Uh, Magic Big Boris guys, uh, I would appreciate the guy who, who could create this for me so much. Yeah, uh, I need to come up with this stuff uh, on my own, which was incredibly, incredibly difficult to be honest. But anyway, so uh, also we print. Whoa. Uh, excuse me. Undeclared. You kidding me, man? What's what's gonna run here? Uh, hold on a sec. I probably didn't put a semicolon or something over there, but it gives. We're in function main thirteen six two eight. Oh my god, what's going on here? Oh bishop occupancy, obviously, yeah. Just just rename the variable. Yeah, obviously just Okay, and also just to make it even more clear, here I want to print uh, bishop occupancy. Okay, and 
tax here. And here we'll have our rook, if you can see. And So here we have a bishop occupancy uh, where once we're representing the pieces on board and here, here we have the bishop attacks for assuming this occupancy so just drop where the piece occurs and same for the rook occupancies uh, well let's put the uh, we didn't put the rook anywhere yes so let's put a rook on d4 okay so now uh, assuming the empty board with no occupancies obviously rook goes to the edges of the board but let's put some piece on let's say d7 and then on d6 so here uh, we can simply say rook occupancy and d6 okay so now it drops on d6 well let's start with the d7 actually Okay, so now it drops in d7, but if we just uh, put another one on d6, uh, regardless of the fact, uh, hold on a sec, why you just don't, uh, uh, should get here. Okay, so we have these two blocking pieces here on d6 and d7 and uh, we just drop on d6 so d7 is obviously ignored because we already have a d6 here blocking piece and now let's make one on well let's say on d3 okay and Okay, so now it drops here. Now let's have also one on a4, which won't affect much, but just as a proof of concept, so a4 doesn't affect anything, and let's have one on f4 as well. Like this. Okay, guys, so this is it basically. So you see, like, uh, whatever, wherever, wherever we. <laughs> wherever we place our uh, occupying blocking piece uh, the rook attacks or bishop attacks drops respectively so this is the core idea behind this pre-calculated attack tables so this is kind of it basically and the most uh, the most nice thing behind this source code is actually if you can just uh, if you just embed this within your chess engine you can uh, you would already obtain this oh no sorry not this uh, this two bishop and rook attacks pre-calculated tables uh, being initialized so and uh, assuming this lookup functions here uh, this this two you can easily uh, generate the attacks for either a bishop or rook and you just need to just need to send the square where the bishop stands and the uh, the relevant occupancy map as well and again like just uh, just just to bear in mind again that we don't that here I'm using the different occupancies uh, just for the demonstration purposes so just to, to give you a demonstration like how it works how it affects the bishop attacks and the rook attacks but uh, in the real mode generator uh, you would obviously have the single occupancy uh, so how, how to get that if you have 
all the white pieces and all the black pieces being represented as ones on a bit boards and all this and all the empty squares being represented as zeros so that's the real occupancy that you need to uh, pass to this either get rook or get bishop attacks within uh, uh, within your mood generator so occupancy should be the same for rook and for the bishop so just just to bear that in mind so i'm, I'm using different ones just just for demonstration so i hope this is quite pretty clear well okay guys so this is it from my side and again like uh i would be very happy having this like code back in those days just to be able to embed this magic bit boards into my chess engine so i'm gifting this implementation to you and obviously we all need to thank Tord Rumstead uh, providing the code for generating this magic bit boards which is uh, my code is based on this code it just commented better and has have some more meaningful variable names uh, I even have some tutorials covering how this rook attack on the flies work bishop attacks on the fly mask rook attacks and mask bishop attacks so uh, two videos for Mask bishop attacks one video, mask rook attacks another video, and bishop attacks and rook attacks on the fly. Uh, probably they are covered in one video. Two, two in one, we two, two, two in one, right? And yeah, nothing much really. So uh, feel free to use this code in your own projects, and this would really speed up the mood generator compared to calculating letter piece of text on the fly well okay guys this is it from my side so i mean like the <laughs> the only valuable thing here is code not my explanation so this is obviously so i just tried to to show you how how you can make use of it so i hope it makes sense and if anybody would ever use this in his own projects please let me know in the commentaries or at least what do you think about this uh i would really appreciate that so this is it for my time, hope you enjoyed, until next time and take care.